Contribution margin by business segment. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, the email on the website, and cost accounting for dummies, my book that I teach in a free live chat just about every week. Contribution margin is fairly common. Uh, you see it a lot in accounting textbooks, but it becomes more complicated when we talk about it by business segment. So this is the way I set up a question on contribution margin by business segment, and setting it up is half the battle. What I have across the top is the product lines with the segments. Here are the four segments. They're all related to the paper industry. Computer paper, napkins, placemats, poster board. And then I have a company total off to the right. And what I have down here and I try to color code it to make it a little easier to see, is we have sales in units, and it's important to label, with, label it whether it's a unit or whether it's in dollars. Sales per unit, let's go down the computer paper column, 30,000 units. The unit price is $14 per unit. So I multiply those two together to get estimated sales in dollars that you see in blue which happens to be 420000 Variable cost per unit, $6. Variable costs in total dollars is 30,000 units times 6. Contribution margin, you'll see the formula below, is sales less variable costs. So in red, total sales in dollars in blue less total variable costs in brown gives me contribution margin. And I define contribution margin as going to pay two things. First of all, contribution margin covers fixed cost, and <clears throat> whatever's left over is your profit. Well, for this example, and it's not uncommon, fixed costs are not separated by segment, and you'll see why in a minute. If I go over to the company total line, we have fixed costs subtracted to get profit, but per we don't have a fixed cost per segment. <clears throat> Another number that we have that's common is contribution margin per unit. So, looking at the computer paper column, if I take the $240,000 contribution margin in dollars and I divide it by 30,000 units, I get a contribution margin per unit. Contribution margin per unit allows you to make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison between the profitability of the four segments. So, for example, napkins. I take 66,000 total dollar contribution margin divided by napkins in units. I get $5.50 a unit. So this is a way of comparing profitability, sales less variable costs, on a per unit basis, before we consider assigning fixed costs because we allocate or assign fixed costs based on some sort of allocation method. So what management's saying is let's ignore the allocation of fixed costs and just see how profitable everything is just looking at contribution margin per unit. And we can see that the computer paper has the highest contribution, actually, sorry, Placements have the highest contribution margin per unit, $8.40. If I go to the total column, I do an average of all the four contribution margins by taking total units for the whole company, and I take contribution margin in dollars for the whole company, divide it by 167,000 units to get a contribution margin per unit for the whole company. I also take sales in blue, less variable costs in brown, less fixed costs in blue to come up with my profit number, 664. And finally, I do profit margin, which says for every dollar that I sell, how much of that dollar is profit. Take profit in green divided by sales in blue. And in this example, about 37 to 38 cents of every dollar I sell is profit. Last thing I want to talk about is potential changes to improve profit. How can I be more profitable? Well, <clears throat> fixed cost is what it is. You're going to subtract that 
from your profit to come up with company-wide profit. That's why it's only fixed costs are only in the total company column. So the question is, what can I do between sales and variable costs to become more profitable? And I list two ways here. The first is I can sell more of the product with the highest contribution margin per unit, which happens to be placemats. So I could increase placemats from 45 to 50,000 units sold. And I would see that in total, my profit's now a little higher. My contribution margin per unit is a little higher. So I'm going to change placemats back to 45,000 just for now. Another way to become more profitable would be increase the sale price for a product with a low contribution margin per unit. In this example, the napkins has a low contribution margin per unit. Why don't I increase the unit price from $10 a unit to 12? Contribution margin goes up per unit. <clears throat> contribution margin for the overall company goes up, and my profit goes up a little bit. <clears throat> so what we see is, is that, I'm going to change that back. What we see is, is that selling more of the product with the higher contribution margin per unit increases profit. And we also see that raising the price, the sale price per unit, on the product that has the lowest contribution margin per unit also increases our profit. So I think this is a great way to set up a contribution margin by segment question when you're asked to do some manipulating on contribution margin and when the focus really is not on fixed costs. That's as far as we're going to get on contribution margin by business segment. Remember that on the website, St. Louis Test, stltest.net, we have our toughest accounting topics, small group live chats that I teach on a rotating basis. These dates are always updated. These are the topics I'm asked the most about by accounting students. And also, the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, I teach about a chapter a week in a free weekly live chat. And we teach the live chat about every week. And we go through the book that way. And this is a picture of the book that you can get on Amazon.com. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.